In this presentation, we will record journal entries related to wages, both direct and indirect, within a job cost system. Information will be on the left. We're going to enter that into our general journal, then post it to the general ledger. General ledger being used to create the trial balance. Here is our trial balance. It's in order, assets, and then liabilities, and then equity, income, and expenses. We, of course, are focusing in on the asset accounts, more specifically the inventory accounts, as we take a look at the flow of a job cost system. What we're doing here is looking at the wages that are paid to people that work in basically the where in the construction of whatever we make. We're making guitars in the construction. If we have construction jobs, within uh, the construction process, the people that work directly on that, as well as the people that work indirectly, uh, we're going to have to sort those two out and record this information. To understand this, we first need to think about that we're really kind of just processing payroll here. We're processing payroll to people that work on the jobs. If they work in the factory and they're making guitars, they work in the factory. We're processing the payroll. Now, when that happens, typically we think that the journal entry, if we, if we take out all the uh, withholdings we're not going to get into payroll withholdings and whatnot but if we think about the simplified transaction of a payroll transaction it would be we're paying someone crediting cash we instead are going to make a payable wages payable and then the debit traditionally we would think would go to wages expense or something some type of expense in this case that's of course what the difference is going to be and it, and it takes a little, little while to really understand that this is going to happen a lot in a job cost system because we start to memorize if we've worked in other types of uh, industries, a service company, merchandising company, that every time we have payroll, it's just going to be wages expense. But uh, in this case, we're, that's because of the matching principle. Before, it used to be that we used those wages in order to help us generate revenue in the same time period. And this time, where they're not generating revenue yet, they're making an asset, they're making inventory. So that's the first thing we need to realize. We're kind of processing payroll, but it's going to look different. And we're going to have to just basically unlearn if we just memorized kind of the payroll journal entry, which is the credit cash or credit wages payable and debit the expense. We're not going to debit the expense because it's not an expense type. What we're going to have over here is the uh, jobs that they worked on. And that's what we will have to track. So let's take a look at that real quick on how that might happen from a forms basis. Just an example. So we're going to go to the right over here, all the way to the right. And we're going to have something like a time ticket, of course. And the time ticket is going to give us an idea of uh, the, the jobs, the people that worked, the jobs that they worked on, so that we can track what job is being worked on. So just note that we're going to need some type of system within a job cost system to track which jobs are being worked on, so that when we process the payroll, we can process it and and select the correct account to to hit which, which is going to be the correct job account uh, when processing uh, their payroll uh, process so this individual worked on job b15 and that's where we need to apply the expense of the wages we're going to pay for this individual note that this could happen for a company that makes stuff or for a service company like a service company like a bookkeeping company may have um, a, a job cost system in a similar fashion. Also note that here we're applying out the actual cost. Uh, if we work in a bookkeeping company or something like that, or a law firm, we may have a billable rate for people that might be different, meaning we might make our invoices using uh, some type of billable rate that's different from the actual pay rate. Or we might make our invoice with what we actually pay an individual and then mark it up, use some kind of markup uh, in order to record it. Here, though, we're tracking the cost to the inventory, the cost to the job. So we're really using the actual number that we pay uh, employees here. So I'm going to go all the way to the left again. So I've scrolled all the way back to the left. Now that we've just seen the documentation that might be used to create this, we're, we're going to just look at the jobs here. This is the, the jobs and the direct labor that we are applying to them, which we're putting together by basically uh, tracking as we as the employees work, typically in a database program of some kind, uh, what job they worked on. So job uh, B15, we've got 1,200 that's going to be applied for direct labor. Job B16, 900. Uh, B17, 560. 
B18850, and B19690 for a total of 4,200. So the journal entry then is pretty straightforward. We don't need to break it out for the journal entry, but we do need to break it out for the supporting documentation in each job. So the journal entry, we're just going to use this total here. It's going to go into work in process. And that's usually, that's going to be kind of the confusing thing here because again, typically we would think of it as an expense. Here we are using these wages in order to help us generate an asset, which is going to be inventory, which is represented here by unfinished work in process. So it, it's a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another debit. So I'm going to right click and copy. We're going to put this in B10, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount in C10 is going to be that 4,200. Then we're going to credit something for 4,200. I'm going to use the kind of plug formula of negative of that number and enter. And then we just need to see the amount. Now we could say that we paid cash, but typically a lot of book problems and in practice, we may go into wages payable first and then pay it at a later time. So I'm going to put wages payable. So J14, right click and copy. We're going to put that in B11, right click and paste one, two, three values only. So again, if, if this was a normal payroll journal entry, for a non-manufacturing company, we would credit wages payable or cash and debit wages expense or something like that. And then we, we would have withholdings too. We're simplifying the kind of payroll entry here, but we would debit wages expense. Here, we're not debiting the expense. And that's kind of the tricky thing that we're going to have to see a few times over as we go through a manufacturing company. And that's because of the matching principle. We haven't used those wages to help generate revenue yet. They're going to help us generate revenue in the future. When we finally sell the inventory, we will expense it in the form of cost of goods sold. So the value of that work is going into the inventory, which is currently in process and therefore going into work in process. So let's record that out. Here's the work in process account. It's going to be one, two, three, four accounts down here. It's going to be four accounts over on the GL then. We're going to try to just scroll back and forth. If you want to make the screen smaller, uh, that can help to record. I'm going to try to keep it full size and use scrolling uh, to, to do this. We could also freeze the panes, but we'll do it this way. So we're going to go to work in process. Here it is. We want to be in the debit. We are in cell S10. I'm going to say equals and point to that 4,200. And that's going to bring the balance from 2,230 up by 4,200 to 6,430. That then 